Okay. Now, let's make a simple chart. I can never find my chalk. Make things really simple. We know magnetism is radiation. Radiation is polarization. Radiation has never attracted anything. It displaces things. We know it displaces and concentrates and forces dielectricity to the center of the quote-unquote magnet, which is not a magnet, it's a dielectric object with a ratio of 3.23606, on and on and on, in a perfect system to one part magnetism. Here we have dielectricity and electricity. These are the two co-principles of the entire universe. Obviously charge comes first, then radiation. Can't have radiation without something that's radiating. Down here we have gravity and mass. Up here we have electrification, which is the byproduct of phi times psi electrification. We know that in stellar objects, galactic jets and whatnot, dielectricity terminates as into grass mat, uh, gravity, the particle creation. The fundamental particle, by the way, is the neutron, which as we know turns into a proton from quote-unquote beta decay, a phrase taken from quantum, a cult of quantum, but all that happens is that uh, the neutron spins up and it uh, forms and becomes a magnetically, uh, uh, magnetically uh, magnetically dominant to become a proton. There's no such thing as beta decay and inverse beta decay. These are just misunderstandings. So, we know everything over here is geometric, spatial, discharging, the product of radiation. So over here we have positive space. And we know that dielectricity and electricity are counterspatial, or negative space. We know over here, this is not reverse time, this is no time. No polarization, no space, no radiation, there can be no time. Logical, the Greeks said the same thing. Here we have positive time, because electricity has transverse components. Magnetism, remember electricity terminates as magnetism in discharge by losing its dielectric component. Remember magnetism, phi times psi equals E for electrification. We know that everything over here is electrical, counterspatial, is charging. Everything over here is the radiative byproduct. Gravity mass is spatially accumulative, but it is counterspatially gravitative in its field. It is centripetal in its field. That is why it has properties of both dielectricity and magnetism. Electricity is the same way. AC current or DC. DC we have spatially accumulative but counterspatially in our field. So, electricity terminates in the magnetism. Dielectricity and stellar objects terminates in the creation of the mass particle with this equation that I discovered 10 years ago, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. All charge necessitates discharge. Okay? Magnetism is not driving a magnet. Magnetism doesn't attract anything. It displaces things. This is dielectricity. Just take this as an example of our dielectric inertial plane. It necessitates discharge. All charge necessitates discharge. All centrifugal necessitates centripetal. All divergence necessitates convergence. All charge necessitates discharge. All space, start with counter space. All counter space necessitates space. Here we have charge, and over here we have charge, discharge. Charge and discharge. Mother Nature doesn't do math. Things are simplex, but not simple. Charge necessitates spatial radiative discharge. What is driving a magnet? Okay, A magnet is not being driven by magnetism. So what is driving what? Remember, we have four field or ether modalities. Radial. Circular as in our AC current magnetism. This, of course, does not have gyromagnetic precession because it isn't a binding system. 
and it doesn't have a centripetal returning magnetism and is only circular because it is only AC current lines. Here we have radiation, or as Maxwell and Faraday called it, the dielectric field. So, let's start over again and take a look at our magnet. All charge necessitates discharge. We know that a magnet is either created one of two ways by striking a powerful magnet against soft iron, wherein you get a really weak, coherent magnetic magnetization, but that's incorrect. What is happening is dielectric coherence, or you're taking cap banks and discharging into magnetizer coils, but Magnetizer coil, magnetizing coils is only what they're called. They create dielectric capacitance increase, which necessitates what happens if we increase charge? We increase discharge, radiation. Polarization. Polarization equals radiation, equals the creation of space. It's like the puppet master behind the curtains. Everybody sees the puppet because this is spatial. This is radiative. People can feel this and its effects. People cannot feel or see the effects of what is counterspatial, centripetal, and inertial. The quote-unquote block wall, which is only a description, not an explanation of anything. What is driving a magnet is this. It is not located here. What does that mean? It means it is displaced here. It is focused here in any system. I said you can slice this magnet a thousand times, top to bottom, against its quote-unquote polarity, each little piece will have a north pole and a south pole, but that's only a misnomer because you spin anything, your cat, your dog, your wife, your Oreos, it's all moving one direction, but from either end it looks clockwise, and the other end it looks counterclockwise. So each one of our little slices has a north pole, a south pole, and an inertial plane. That is field incommensurability, or FI. So, what does that mean? You understand how a magnet works. Divergence, convergence, centrifugal, centripetal. Here we have our centrifugal reciprocating magnetism returning to the centripetal. Any Gauss meter will show you highest Gauss readings are here. Centrifugal divergent starts slow, faster, faster. Slow, faster, faster. That's why max velocity is here. Why? Because that's the physical boundary of where a magnet ends and dielectricity ends. Because the physical magnet ends there. Centripetal, just like a tornado. Max velocity is at the apex, right here. This is our inertial plane. This is the dielectricity that is driving the entire magnet. It is focused there, it is concentrated there, it is not located there. Same thing in fluid dynamics and water displacement. These fields, while they look to you like they're 90 degrees, are actually 180 degrees. But, in a conjugate binding system, with, which is the magnet, our maximum inversion between two oppositional fields is a double hyperbola and the accretional plane or the dielectric plane. Remember, dielectricity is not spatial, it is counterspatial, centripetal. This is how a magnet works. This is what a magnet is. This isn't my theory, opinion, and belief. This is absolutely the case. As Faraday and Maxwell call it, they call it the dielectric field. It is the discharge, the radiation, end product of anything that is charging. Principles are really simple. You don't understand this chart, you will never understand anything about how nature works or anything. We have space, counter space, convergence, divergence, centrifugal. Yes, my handwriting stinks. And centripetal. Charge. No such thing as a negative charge. Discharge. Then we have our four ether modalities. Radial, 
I'm not referring to any of these here. Radial, circular, counterspatial, such as dielectricity, and radiation, discharge, necessitated, the Greek word anankia. That's why mass matter is spatially accumulative. I'll have to say it again. You have to get this through your skull. Polarization equals radiation. Radiation necessitates, definitionally, space. All charge necessitates discharge. Anything centripetal, counterspatial, is charging. This isn't a negative charge. This is discharge. Hey, Mother Nature doesn't do negative charges. She only does discharges. Human perceptual understanding doesn't understand that this is the same thing as this. Modality difference. The ether is the ether is the ether. Charge, discharge. Centrifugal, centripetal. Divergent, convergent. Spatial, counterspatial. Let's talk about a solenoid next. And what drives everything, since the ether is the ether, is the ether, and electricity, magnetism, dielectricity. All four modes, what are they all driven by? They're driven by this one equation. This is the GUT. This is the Grand Unified Theory. Any line, divided unevenly. Divide each of those sections unevenly again, you end up with phi, 1, 1, and 1 over phi, which equals phi cubed. The product of 1 over phi to the power of negative 3. That's how you can derive all four modalities of the ether from this one equation. I've got over 250 pages written about this one equation alone explaining it here on a simple little YouTube video is absolutely impossible. But as it turns out, all field reciprocation and gyromagnetic precessional, also known as a Lamore frequency, incorrectly understood, they all exhibit golden ratio sections of divergence and convergence in their angles and their gyromagnetic precession. That's in the book, second edition. Further elaboration and discussion on same and much, much more within the third edition of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism.